Hello everyone. Now I'm going to give you a, a demonstration of how to simulate uh, this problem in Abacus. So basically it's uh, the same problem that we used for lecture 5.1 and this time I'm going to uh, find the stress using rectangular element, linear rectangular element and a quadratic rectangular element. So Let's uh, read the question again. So we have a rectangular which has the length of one unit of a length and uh, has the height of a one unit of, of the length. And we have a load which is uh, one unit of the force. And for the boundary condition, this edge is completely fixed. And uh, the Young's mod modulus uh, is uh, 10,000 units of a stress and the percent ratio is equal to 0 0.3 so yeah I think uh, this figure just uh, block the percent ratio and it should be 0 0.3 and now let's uh, model this uh, problem in Abacus so we open the software And then we select this one. And then we build the part. We go to the part module and uh, hit this icon. So it's a 2D problem and a shear. So it's a one by one. So let's put uh, five here and continue. And then we select this icon and uh, start from zero. So I'm going to input the coordinate here. So 1.1 and hit enter and then the um, the diagonal corner has the coordinate of 1 1 so hit enter now we have this part and now we just hit the middle mouse button and hit uh, down now we have this part okay so next part we can go to the mesh module or you can just uh, click here part and click this mesh switch to and if you click right click this uh, mesh icon and click this one it will bring you to this uh, mesh module as well so for example you click here and switch see it uh, brings you to the same toolbox and now so we are going to use the one um, linear quadratic uh, element to match this part. So let's select uh, C the H. So we select this one and uh, hit uh, down. And so by number we put one and uh, apply. Okay, and then we select this one, this edge and uh, hit down. And it's one. So click uh, apply. Okay, and then we we select this edge and click down and then put one apply okay and then similar for this edge down and put one apply and okay now we can match this part so yes see the color things uh, the color changed so now we have a measure part and now the empty sign go away so next uh, we need to assign element tab. So we are going to use a uh, linear and uh, so we are going to use a linear element and uh, for the element tab we can choose either plain stress and plain stream. So for demonstration here I use a plain stream. And here so for our current uh, use of uh, abacus we need to untick reduced integration so this uh, for the integration part we are going to talk about uh, this in our next uh, lecture so for current use and for your assignments you can just uh, untick this and now so you can see here it shows that uh, we are going to use a followed by linear plane stream quadrilateral element so click uh, OK so 
now we have a, a meshed part with a linear quadrilateral element. So next we need to go to the material properties to define the material. So you can click, uh, you can go to the property module or you can just click here. Let me give you a demonstration. So you can click uh, material and uh, create. So it will bring you to the same uh, module. And uh, once you click this, and you can have this uh, window edit material. But if you just uh, right click this and create, it will create uh, a material. It will bring you to the edit material window directly. So here we call it uh, uh, rectangle material. So and uh, we go to the mechanical elasticity elastic. And here we input the Young's modulus, which is uh, 10,000. 10,000. And here is the percent ratio we use uh, 0 0.3. And then, yeah, we, um, we are talking about uh, isotropic uh, linear material. So you can just put uh, isotropic. So for now. So if uh, in the future you want to use some advanced material, so you can change, uh, you can explore these uh, options as well. And now hit uh, OK. Now we have a material property, and then we need to cr create a section. So for this section, it's a solid section. So we can call it a, a rectangle section and a homogeneous. Click uh, continue. So this is uh, the material pr material property that we just created, and we are going to use a plain string. So we need to assign a cyclist for this uh, uh, rectangular. So usually we use default one, which is uh, one, and click uh, OK. Now we have a cross section. In order to link the material property with this part, we need to assign the cross section. Now we select uh, this part and uh, click uh, down. Then, so the software asks us to select a section. So we use the rectangle section. This is, the, this is the only section that we created. And then we click uh, OK. So now we have a uh, mesh and uh, material properties for this part. Next part, we can create a step. So you can click uh, this. Uh, you can go to the step module from here, or you can Go to the step module from uh, here, and uh, right-click this step and uh, create. So it bring it will bring you to the create step window directly, like uh, when you click uh, materials. So if you go to the step module and you have you need to click uh, create step first, and then this window will pop up. And now we create. Uh, Step uh, static, and then we select uh, static, and then click uh, continue. So, for the long linear geometry, for this uh, demonstration, I'm going to use off, and then click uh, OK. Now we have a step, and uh, then we need to apply boundary conditions. Usually, we go to we use the node module, so you can switch to node module from here. Or you can go to this uh, under uh, step static. You can click uh, loads and boundary condition. So if you click uh, boundary condition and uh, click create, then it says uh, the assembly does not contain any part. So sorry, we need to create a assembly first. So we go to create instance, and we create an instance from this part. So we click uh, OK. Now we have an instance. Now we can create uh, boundary conditions and uh, loading conditions. So we can go to uh, load module from here, or we can just click uh, 
boundary condition here and uh, click uh, create boundary condition. So the create boundary condition windows pop up. Then we can create, uh, we can name our boundary condition, fix the edge. Then we select a mechanical and uh, in casture, continue. So we select uh, this edge and click uh, continue. And here we use the uh, in casture and click uh, OK. Now we have applied uh, the boundary conditions successfully. Next step, we can apply load. So we can click, uh, we can go to the apply load, applying loader window from here, create, or we can just uh, click uh, this button. It's uh, equivalent. So create load. So concentrated uh, load. So we have select uh, concentrated concentrated force, click uh, continue, and then we select uh, this uh, node and click uh, down. And now we need to apply its uh, magnitude, its elective one, and go going down along that direction. So click uh, OK. You can see we, once you apply the load successfully, you can see we have uh, an icon showing the, force, the direction of the force. So now we have a step, we have a mesh, we have a material property, and we have a assembly. So we need to create a job. So we can click a job from here, or we can go to the, we can find the jobs on, in the model tree. So click jobs and click create. So we are going to create a job. So this is a, we call it example three, and then we can click uh, continue, and then click uh, OK. Now we can submit the job. So you can see our job, our analysis input fail process completed successfully. So it means uh, our model is error free. So now our model has completed uh, successfully. So we can check uh, results. So right click and go to results. And uh, we can check uh, the deformation and the stress. Stress uh, is uh, linear. And if you want to check a uh, uh, node, you can check a uh, node from uh, using tool query and just click load and click a uh, prob value. So you can check uh, uh, this is a uh, Vamisa stress because uh, currently we are under Vamisa stress. So we have a four node, we don't have any because this is linear quadrilateral element, so we only have uh, four nodes. So you can also check uh, how many loads are there by clicking this one. So you click this element, you can see we have three loads, one, two, three, and four. Now let's uh, simulate uh, the problem again using a uh, quadratic uh, quadrilateral element. So let's uh, close this. So you go back to the model and uh, we need to go to the mesh part. So this time we are going to use a quadratic, um, quadratic uh, quadrilateral element. So we click uh, assign element tab. Let's change the element uh, tab for this uh, uh, model. So last time we used linear. Linear means uh, linear quadrilateral element. Linear, bilinear quadrilateral element. Now, this time we click uh, quadratic. So let's untick uh, reduced integration. Now we are going to use uh, an eight load quadratic plane string quadrilateral element. So we will have uh, three, node, three nodes at the uh, corners and uh, three nodes uh, at the uh, middle points. So click uh, OK. Now we can just create uh, another job. So let's call it uh, example three. 
and uh, quadratic quadratic uh, quadrilateral elements. Okay, let's click uh, continue and click uh, OK so we can submit uh, this job. So we can see here showing that the uh, analysis input file processor completed successfully. So we don't have any error. So and now the example, the job has uh, completed successfully. So we can check uh, results. So you can see this is our uh, stress. So it's a uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, complicated complicated than the than the results from a uh, uh, linear quadrilateral element. Okay. So next, I'm going to show you how to find the element uh, stiffness uh, matrix for this problem. I'm going to use a linear quadrilateral element as a, as an example. So, in order to find the element stiffness uh, matrix, so we there are, we have two methods. Method one, I have mentioned this uh, earlier in the lecture. So we know that uh, once uh, we have a structure, and uh, we can describe the relationship between the load degrees of freedom and the load force vectors using this relationship k times u is equal to f. So if we apply one for one degrees of a free for one load of degrees of freedom and the rest uh, degrees of freedom at zero, then we can get the first co first column of this of the element stiffness uh, matrix. So let's use this method to find the first uh, uh, column of the stiffness matrix uh, first. So now let's go back to the model tree and uh, I want to change the mesh to linear quadrilateral element first. So we use the linear and we untick reduced integration, click OK. So this time we are going to apply um, a degrees of freedom for one node and the rest of the rest of the loads will be fixed. So we need to delete our boundary condition. So we can go to here. So you can't delete the boundary condition from here because it's uh, it's under this step. You have to go to the boundary conditions for this model. It's uh, here, the boundary condition and the loads. So you click uh, this one and just click uh, delete. Now the boundary condition is gone. Now we need to delete the concentrated uh, node. So click uh, delete and click uh, yes. So the load condition is gone. Now we need to, we just need to apply displacement. So we click uh, displacement. So this is the uh, load one, this is load two, this is load three, this is load four. So let's uh, define the boundary condition for, so load one, load one, boundary condition. So we call it load one BC. And then this time we need to apply a displacement. So we select the displacement and the rotation, continue. So for this one, so we have, uh, this is a linear quadrilateral element. So we will have uh, eight load degrees of freedom. So for the, we will start from this point. So we click here. And for U1 and U2, we click uh, both. And uh, we, pick, we put uh, U1 as a uh, one and U2 as zero and click uh, okay. And then 
we click uh, the boundary condition and then we apply boundary condition for the second load so load uh, 2 and uh, boundary condition so we do the same thing but th for this uh, node we need to put uh, both uh, of them as uh, 0 so this uh, this load and this load and this load will be completely fixed and we only allow one lower degrees of freedom which is uh, x and y is uh, 0 as well so click uh, OK and similarly we constrain the third load so it's called uh, load 3 and bc and then we do the same thing so click uh, here and then we put 0 and 0, click uh, OK. Similarly, so for node uh, 4, so click. And uh, we are going to use the same uh, option, displacement and rotation, click continue. And we click this point. And then we click done. And then we put 0, 0. And then we click uh, OK. So we applied, so if you recall the boundary conditions, so we only applied uh, one unit of uh, displacement along this direction for this load only. So then we will have a uh, four reaction force from uh, this load, this load, this load, and this load. Then this uh, reaction force is equal to the first uh, column of a stiffness uh, matrix. So let's uh, run this job. So this time we can create a new one called uh, uh, check uh, stiffness uh, matrix and click uh, continue and click uh, OK. So now we submit this job. So it shows that we have submitted our analysis. And our analysis input file processor completely complete, completed successfully. So it's error free. Now our uh, file has completed successfully. So we click and we can check the results. So this time, uh, so you can see we applied uh, uh, one unit of uh, displacement at this load along x direction only. Now we need to check the uh, forces here. We go to the tools and uh, we need to create uh, an x, y data. So we go click uh, create and uh, we need to go to the ODB field output. I click continue and this time we need to put uh, the position to unique uh, loader and we need to select uh, reaction forces and we just need a horizontal reaction force RF1 and a vertical reaction force RF2 and then we need to select uh, the forces that we want the loads that we want to export its uh, export its uh, forces so let's uh, manually select uh, these uh, four nodes at the corners. So we hold shift and right click uh, the left uh, mouse button. So left click the mouse button and click the second load, click the third load and click the fourth load. And then this time we need to uh, click uh, edit uh, uh, selection. So you can see we have uh, four loads selected. Now receive this uh, information and click uh, OK. So you can see the XY data curves for the requested XY data extraction has been created. So once created, we can go to report and uh, XY data. So you can, it should show up here. Sometimes it's a little bit slow. So Let's uh, check uh, again. So 
you can see here. So it should be only half of them. So this is because I did a test first. So let's just select uh, RF1 at load 1, RF2 at load 2, RF1 at load 3, RF1 at load 4, and RF2 at load 1, 2, and 3, and 4. So if you just uh, if you follow this video, you can you only have these uh, eight options. So you can select all of them, and let's uh, call it uh, load on false txt. Then we can open it uh, in uh, as the txt file. So click uh, OK. So you can see we have uh, the software has created a file called uh, load on false.txt. So you can go to uh, disk C and uh, temp, so you can get this file. Once you open it, it's uh, like this. So, so let's. Uh, this is uh, RF uh, one from node one. So this will be our K one one, right? So this will be our. So this is RF2 from node 1. This will be K to 1. So similarly, this will be K31. This will be our K41. So this value is K41. K41. And uh, let's uh, put it uh, in Excel so that we can check it uh, later. So for for a linear quadrilateral element, we have eight degrees of freedom. So this is uh, for load one. So let's call it uh, load one, and uh, this is load two, this is load three, and this is uh, load four. This is load 3. So for the first row, we have a key 11 one is equal to this value. So just uh, copy it. And uh, key 21 one has this value. So I'll just, uh, and, uh, I'll just compare a few values. So Let's uh, extract uh, this one, k3, k3, 1, and k3, 2. So our k3, 2 should be uh, k4, k4, 1, sorry, k4, 1 is here. And similarly, we can find uh, this is uh, k. Uh, should be the third, should it be, should be six, uh, one. It's first load, second load, and sixth load. This should be the key five one. This should be the key six uh, one. So this should be the K seven one. This should be the K K eight one. So okay. Now let's put uh, K four one, K five one, K five one, K six one. And uh, K71. And uh, K81. So we have uh, uh, this is uh, for the load one. This is one, two, so 
This is the followed one. So this is for load two. This is followed three. This is followed four. So load two, three, load four. So this is uh, the first row of our stiffness uh, matrix. And uh, you can use the same method to find uh, the rest of the rows. So for the next uh, uh, columns of stiffness matrix, you just uh, switch this to zero and put this as one. And then you submit the job again, you will get uh, the second uh, column of the stiffness matrix. So this method is a little bit uh, tedious. Now I'm going to use uh, another method to show you the stiffness matrix for this uh, um, for for this uh, part. Now you can find your uh, check stiffness uh, matrix uh, file in this uh, folder. So if you use uh, if you didn't uh, make any changes, so you will find your check stiffness uh, file under temp folder in uh, disk C. And uh, here we need to play with the uh, IMP file. So IMP file is, uh, is uh, a text file that contains uh, all your model's information in this file. So you can, if you, other, if you want to share your model with other people, you can just uh, send uh, uh, them your IMP file and then they can run your model using this file, using Abacus. So we are going to add uh, one piece of uh, sentences. So first thing we need to do, we need to delete uh, our old step. Otherwise, uh, uh, you would get some uh, errors. So here, I'm going to put uh, uh, this piece of a sentence that uh, I talked about in the lecture. So we're going to put this piece of sentence. And then let's uh, save this file. And this time I'm going to submit uh, this job using PowerShell. So you hold the shift and right click your mouse button and then click uh, open PowerShell window. So, if you are trying to create a new model, you can use Abacus CE. But once uh, you are pretty sure your model, your MP file is error-free, you can submit your job using this uh, PowerShell. It's uh, faster. So let's uh, put. Uh, you need to. Uh, in order to submit the file, you need to use that. You need to input Abacus first, and then job is equal to your file name. So our file name is called uh, check stiffness uh, matrix and then put uh, interactive and then hit uh, enter. Then your IMP file will be submitted to this uh, PowerShell and this PowerShell will call Abacus and the Abacus is running an analysis uh, behind the screen. So. You don't need to open the Abacus CE, but if you finished your model, you can uh, check your results using uh, Abacus CE. So usually your results is uh, stored in .odb file, this file. So now you can see that uh, the job check stiffness matrix completed. So let's open this file. So you can open it uh, in a text editor, or you can just open it uh, in Loadpad. So now we have this uh, stiffness uh, matrix. So uh, let's open it uh, in Excel and check uh, uh, this stiffness uh, matrix. So we open. And uh, so it's uh, in this folder. To see. Let's uh, open it. So browse and then we put. Uh, so it, we are already here. So we just open this uh, stiffness matrix and click uh, open. And then we use this one, click next, next, finish. 
So let's put it uh, side by side. So you can see, uh, let me explain the format of uh, this file. So this is a load ID, and this is a load out degrees of freedom, and this is a load ID, and this is a degrees of freedom. So this is a load ID for the, so I already put a, a matrix here. So this is your um, column index, so load one the degree 1, it means uh, load 1, degree 1, and uh, load 1, degree one, degree of freedom 1, so it's uh, it's uh, your k11, one one. it's equal to this uh, value, and this is uh, uh, load 1, second degree of uh, freedom, and uh, load 1, and the first degree of freedom. So it's a uh, this value is going here. So this one is a uh, load two. So you select uh, find load two, and the first degree of freedom. So let me highlight this. So this one is a uh, load two, the first degree of freedom, and load one, the first degree of freedom. So basically, it's a uh, this uh, column. So you can just put uh, this value here and uh, for the next value it's uh, going here it's a uh, second degree of freedom of load 2 and uh, the first degree of freedom of load 1 so it's a uh, this value put it here the next value is uh, the first degree of freedom of load 3 and uh, the first degree freedom of load 1, so it's uh, going here. And uh, for the next value, it's uh, going here. So for the next value, it's uh, the first degree of uh, first degree of freedom of uh, uh, load 4 and the first degree of freedom of uh, load 1. So it's going here. And the next value, it's a uh, going here. So if you compare, this is from the method 1, right? This is from uh, method 2. So if you compare this uh, stiffness uh, matrix uh, with this one, you will find that it's uh, exactly the same. So I just uh, 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 export the first row. If you are interested, you can finish uh, all of them. So, because this uh, matrix is uh, symmetric, so you will just find uh, half of the values plus the diagonal values. Okay.